Syria is the cradle of civilizations, where man's earliest language ever was preserved in a 30-letter alphabet, and the oldest musical notes on earth were inscribed on clay. Syria was sanctified with the footsteps of Jesus Christ, and St. Paul was spiritually reborn, following the revelatory emergence to him of the Master on the outskirts of Damascus. In the north of Syria, the earliest Byzantine churches were built, and believers were first called Christians. Hundreds of age-old and holy sites rest all over the country. Syria is now the scene of the most colossal humanitarian crisis in the 21st century, following the events that have rocked the country since 2011. Over 9 million Syrians have been internally displaced. More than 3 million others have taken refuge in neighboring countries and overseas, while 12 million residents still bear the brunt of the crisis. Most water, electricity, medical, and educational services and facilities have been damaged or put out of service. Hospitals have been evacuated of their equipment, while their doctors have been targeted. Schools have been deserted, and half the country's school-aged children have dropped out. The Church of Antioch has had its share of that destruction too. It has lost thousands of its people who have been killed or kidnapped. In the forefront of those who have been the two archbishops Paul and John, who were unfortunately abducted while they were endeavoring to make domestic peace. Furthermore, thousands of the Antioch Church congregation members have been forcibly displaced, and a large number of Christian villages have been completely evacuated by force. Strangers attacked our historical churches and monasteries, blowing up and looting those holy places. Our great heritage that has been inherited and cherished by many generations of faithful believers. They broke crosses that have towered our churches for centuries. Antioch icons were sold and the faces of their saints were marred. They broke into St. Takla's monastery and left behind the scribbles of their ignorance on its holy walls. Thus, St. Takla experienced her third martyrdom since she first lay. Facing these challenges, our Antioch Church did not give up its humanitarian duty. Ever since the crisis sparked up, the Patriarchate, through its dedicated Department of Ecumenical Relations and Development, launched emergency plans to meet the immediate needs of affected and displaced people of all categories and affiliations. Thanks to its qualified team, well-trained to accredited standards on providing humanitarian aid and speedy response, the DERD has managed to secure aids to over 3 million persons with the support of its international partners, particularly the IOCC. The department's programs have included the distribution of food, hygiene kits, and household requisites, as well as doing restoration works at both public and private shelters where families who have become homeless overnight are hosted. The department also gives out cash donations that cover accommodation, rents, and school fees, and rehabilitates the infrastructure of a considerable number of schools, hospitals, and private clinics with emphasis on their sanitation, water, and electricity facilities. It provides medicines to patients, particularly to those suffering from cancer. It also covers the costs of critical surgeries and childbirth at private hospitals, including the Patriarchate's Hospital. The department has dug and equipped scores of water wells so as to secure potable water in those areas where the population has remarkably increased due to internal displacement. 
The department has recently launched a distinctive program which aims to repatriate the families displaced from the old city of Homs to their homes through the restoration of both their damaged houses and historical schools so that their children may be back to the school desks they have missed for years. Besides, work is underway on the restoration of the houses of the town of Malula, whose deep-rooted inhabitants still speak Aramaic and pass it on to their children. We aim to enable them to go back safe and well to the houses they had to flee due to terrorist acts. The patriarchs of Antioch have already stated if it is their destiny to demolish, it is our destiny to build and survive. Hence, through its offices that cover most Syrian governorates and its professional team of over 490 volunteers, the department endeavors to wipe off the tears of the grieved and heal the wounds of the injured following the example of the Samaritan, whom our department has adopted for its logo, and through the principles we are devoted to. These can be summed up in transparency, impartiality, justice, and professionalism, for true faith can be translated only through actions. That was what His Beatitude John X said during a meeting with the teams of the department. We don't render these services as a social duty, but rather as a free message of love and reconciliation addressed to everybody, hoping it will bring the people of our country back together. All this would not have been possible without the support of the partners of our church, particularly the IOCC, and that of generous benefactors worldwide who believe in our cause and want to let us share the loaf of bread. These trust that the blessings that God has bestowed upon them are also for their brethren. So, do you all want to be part of this project? Rendering this service, we are contented to be candles that melt to light the road for others.